This is my favorite time of year to go carp fishing. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a few tips that will help you catch more carp in spring. The first thing that I love doing in early spring is going for a walk. Before you catch any carp, before you even set up in a particular area, you need to find them. And so this is just a simple case of walking and walking, climbing trees, uh, finding a place where you can get a good vantage point of the water so you can have best chance of finding those fish and spotting any signs, any clues that you're given, uh, whether it be some pinprick bubbles coming up or some reeds knocking, this will help you catch carp. And in spring, it's a really good time to watch fish because they're warming up. Carp are cold blooded, so a little bit of sun, just a, a rise in uh, water temperatures of a couple of degrees will make so much difference to their activity. So I'm gonna go for a walk now. I'm gonna walk around this whole lake and try and find some fish. There's a few things that will help you find fish. A few nice handy tools. Firstly, a hat. This hat is particularly good because it's got our logo on it. <laughs> no, you, you, I was going to say, do you need to have a Carl and Alex you, hat to find Carl? You can have carp? any hat you like, but the main thing is it has a peak. It basically just gives you a, like a hood which stops too much glare coming in from the sun. And it means you can just look out at the lake. Without squinting. And, yeah, without squinting and you can just get a clear view and focus your eyes on the water without the sun just blinding you. Secondly, since I started using these Polaroid glasses, they have helped so much. They have uh, different lenses into normal glasses. They're, they're polarized lenses, which means you can cut out glare off the water. If you uh, look at the water now, it's very uh, like shimmering. The light is reflecting off it. You put these on, not only do you look way cooler, but the water suddenly, uh, it cuts out the glare and you can see into the water a lot easier. Some days it's more noticeable than others, but these really help spot carp, which are just sat just underneath the water's surface. So glasses and hat are the main key things uh, that are really handy to have to find fish. <laughs> Lastly, binoculars aren't necessary, but I like to have them on me, not only because I like bird watching while I'm fishing, but also because you can just spot fish which are a long way. So I can zoom in on those reeds over there and I can actually spot whether the reeds are moving. Um, I can just see very small signs which you just wouldn't see with your uh, naked eye. And that brings me on to your eyes, which are by far the most important thing. Your eyes and in fact your ears too, because you can often hear when fish jump and not necessarily see them. Then a fish might jump behind that island, but I'll be able to hear it, but not necessarily see it. Your nose, your sense of smell isn't so important because you can't really, can't really smell carp. I don't know, some people might be able to. <laughs> oh, I can't. God. Where is this going? I think, I think if, if you can- <laughs> Where have, is this going, Ali? <laughs> if you have the skill to smell carp, then you are the master locator of fish. Anyway, glasses, hat, binoculars if you really want. And that's, those are the key things that will help you find fish. I've mentioned how important location is. You of course need to find them before you can catch them. But what specific areas should you look for? I'm always looking for some structure on a lake. For example, looking out at the lake now, things I'm most interested in is this island here, the lily pads, which are just starting to come up. I can see dark shapes of the lily pads coming up. They'll be probably fully up in a few weeks time. Over there, there's a fallen tree. Up that end, uh, from previous experience, I know that end is a lot shallower. Shallow water is uh, good to look for because the way the water warms up is the, the top layer, which is getting most sunlight in the spring, warms up a lot faster than the uh, lower half of the, the lake. And so the fish are going to be looking for that warmer water and they will very quickly 
feel the temperature change and go right up into the shallows. So shallow water is another really good place to look. Reeds, lily pads, islands, uh, fallen trees, overhanging trees are all great places to look. Next we're going to look at bait. Now the bait I use in the spring and the quantity of it that I use differs slightly from other times of year. Early on in the spring the water is still cold, the carp are only just starting to wake up and this means that their metabolism is very slow. This means that the, the speed at which they eat and the food passes through their bodies is a lot slower than other times of year, where, like when the water is warmer and they're more active. So you need to be careful uh, when choosing what bait to throw in and how much of it to put in. The key thing I've learned over the years is to just not put too much in. If you put too much in your swim, the fish might get full up very quickly and you're going to find it very hard to get a bite. But if you just go very easy, a little bit at a time, uh, you, you always have a chance. Those fish are going to keep looking for food and you have a lot more chance of catching. The specific baits that I like to use, I've, I've figured two baits that I really like to use in spring and that is corn and crushed boilie. Now the reasons for using these baits, firstly, uh, with corn, it's a very bright coloured bait, very attractive visually, but also it doesn't really fill the fish up very much. I've seen carp clear out huge quantities of corn, uh, even in the winter, and they just don't seem to, it doesn't seem to um, fill up in their bodies. They kind of just poo it out and it's still like almost full grains of corn. I don't really do much observing of carp poo, but I have noticed that. And so they don't really get much from it. So they can eat a lot of it. Crushed boilie is another one of my favorite baits. Rather than throwing in full boilies, which is a lot of bait compacted into a very small ball, if you crush it up, you get a lot of attraction, loads of different particles drifting through the water columns and settling on the lake bed. But there's not actually much like substance there for the fish to actually uh, fill, up, fill themselves up. So. You, Basically in the spring I go for maximum attraction and uh, try and get the fish to notice bait there but just minimal, uh, minimal, what's the word Carl? I, I, I always get stuck on some words, like minimal, you don't want to give them too much bulk, you know, a big roast dinner is like, whoa, really gets in your stomach, but um, like some cornflakes, very light, and there's loads of little bits of you can eat loads of it, cocoa pops as yeah, well. Yeah, you could eat loads of Rice Krispies, couldn't you? But you couldn't eat loads of big potatoes. Yeah, because they're like solid, they're dense. Yeah. Try not to feed too much in the spring. Um, attraction and um, little and often baiting is the, is the way to go, I think. What I'm going to do today is mix up a couple of handfuls of corn with some crushed boilie, and I'm going to put that in on a few different spots. Now pre-baiting is definitely an effective way of baiting. It's not necessary, but I think it really helps your chances when you come to fish. If the fish know that on a particular spot there's always a little bit of grub down there, then it's gonna help when you come and drop rigs in. So I'm gonna make up a little mix and put it in a couple of nice looking spots, just in preparation for some fishing I hope to do on this particular place in a few weeks time. There is definitely a calf out there. I just. I just saw it. Well, there's already a couple of fish cruising along the surface, and that just reminded me that however good it can be to put some bait on the bottom, it's also really worth looking on in the surface layers. Surface fishing has always been my number one favorite way to catch carp, because you can just see everything happen before your eyes. Surface fishing, you don't really need much kit to do it, but there's a couple of baits and tactics which can really help you. Having some dog biscuits or some bread with you at all times is really handy. Uh, dog biscuits are great for catapulting out. Bread is better for freelining a, a small hook bait. You can just grab a piece of bread, put it on a hook and just freeline that. Um, you can also use the uh, white part of the bread inside to squeeze around the hook and you can cast that a bit further. But surface fishing comes in, into its own on spring evenings most of the time. The water will be warming up throughout the day 
and you'll often notice just as the sun is setting the carp will feel a little more confident and if you catapult some dog biscuits out there or throw out some bread uh, you'll see the mouths start coming up and slurping on the surface and that is for sure the best way to catch carp I love it I think today doesn't exactly look like the best day for surface fishing they're of course getting ready uh, they're warming up they're coming up near the surface but I think if we get a warm day in the next few weeks I'm definitely going to give surface fishing a go but just remember that keep bear in mind that the carp will feed on the bottom but they'll also feed on the surface and that brings me on uh, lastly to zig fishing now this is something I haven't done a huge amount of it's a little bit harder to get your head around it's a bit more complicated to set up a zig rig but what it is is basically fishing a bait midwater you can catch carp on the bottom, on the surface, but you can also suspend the bait mid-water using a lead on the bottom um, and using a buoyant bait that's popped up off the lead. This is really effective mostly on deeper waters where there's a lot of uh, depth for the carp to be in. On shallow places like this, I normally opt for a, either a bottom approach or a surface approach, but if you're fishing more than four or five foot, the carp will spend a lot of their time cruising mid-water so zig fishing can be a great way to target fish if they're sitting in the mid layers. Oh, and before I go, uh, a couple of other really good rigs and tactics to use are firstly trod rigs. Trod rigs are really handy because in the spring the bottom is, there's going to there's gonna be a little bit of weed growth starting to grow because uh, that sun is going to be getting brighter. A trod rig is really effective because it just sits above that weed. It, it means you have a, a hook bait presentable at all times and uh, it's a pretty uh, effective go-to rig uh, in spring. Any other pop-up rig kind of does a similar job. A buoyant hook bait just sits over the bottom substrate and uh, above that low-lying weed and works really well. If you'd like to learn more about carp fishing and carp fishing tactics, feel free to click the video here for more info on how to catch more carp. See you next time.